Hey, how's it going? And today I'm gonna to show you how to create a fade-in screen. This is pretty basic. It can be even a lot more complicated than this, but I just think this is, again, a real nifty function to have in a game. And I came up with this idea because I had a game with a bunch of controls, and then I realized while the message was displaying that people could go on and start clicking on the buttons, and I actually thought, well, if you put up a big screen, you could actually block them visually from even thinking about pressing the buttons while you're giving them the information. So rather than trying to figure out how to disable all the buttons and all this, I thought it'd be greater just to make the message screen bigger and block <laughs> and block what they're able to do. Okay. So anyway, to do this, I'm just going to walk you through kind of what I have set up here. So right now, I just have, where am I at here? The first person. So we're just gonna create a widget. And so in the level blueprint, what I have is this, if you've seen my other tutorials, you can just take a screenshot of this. This is the basic functionality. This is just gonna be triggered by a keyboard event. You create a widget and then add the viewport and then we get the player controller and then we enable click events and show mouse cursor. And so this is mostly showing you how to do the blueprint. So I'm gonna do that from scratch. So this is all you do is you, once you got that functionality set in your level blueprint, you right click, come down here to widget blueprint, we'll go yes and we're creating a new one and I'm just gonna come in here and I do a canvas panel some people don't like canvas panels, but I like them because it keeps everything nice and organized. If you scroll out, you can make this to 1920 by 1080, which is what we want, because this is like high definition 16 by nine. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get a button. And one of the great things about a button is, I'll show you in a minute here, get our button. And then just on top of the button, we'll have our text, which will be our what we're gonna actually animate. So while we're on the button, I can select size to content, and then I can just drag this off. You know, I've been thinking a lot about this because anchors can be offset. It almost like, it almost doesn't seem like it even matters if you have anchors, because you can set an anchor, but then you can offset it anywhere you want. So anyway, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna make sure I'm on the button that helps. Oh, because I have it sized to fit, I better change that for right now. It won't let me move. I can just drag these handles out and resize this. So let's say I just want to say I want it to take up most of the screen. Because like I said, I want to visually block people from clicking on buttons until my message is done displaying. Okay, and then we can just go on the text block here. And if we want, we can just go ahead and make that font black and go OK. And then we can, of course, make it bigger too. And we can just write in whatever we want to write here. We probably want to turn on auto wrap here. And then we can just write something like um, intermission. <laughs> and that's it. Okay, so that takes care of our screen. Now, this is how easy it is to create a fade in, is all we have to do is Make sure we're on the text, but that doesn't really matter. We can come to animations, click animation. We'll just leave it called new animation. Click on new animation, go to add track. And we want it to be our text, so we click that. And then we click here to add a track. And we want to add our render opacity. And then what we do is, one of the tricks is, you want to start with the end in mind and work back. So the end in mind is that this is going to fade in. So I'm going to drag it out to about 1.75 seconds, somewhere like in there. And here, I have to click this button here, that little tiny thing to add a keyframe. And then I just drag this back to where I want to be. I can click on the keyframe here and reset it right there to zero. And then all I have to do is hit play, and there's my fade in. So then I'll just go compile and save. And now I just have to jump into the graph over here real fast. This will be an event construct. Drag off here, and we're just gonna go play animation. This, could, this part couldn't be easier. I wish Niagara was this easy. 
<laughs> and then we just come over here to our new animation, drag it on, and just took that up into animation. And we hit compile and save. And then if I come back into my level blueprint, I just have to select this new widget to display. So we come in here and I'll just select this one right there, compile and save that. Go to first person, hit play, click in, and I hit one, there's my message pops up. And that's it, that's all there is to it. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.